recording and show the chat down below. Okay, first thing I want to do today is correct a problem. Jeez, nobody ever calls me. Ah, sorry about that. I forgot to turn my phone off. Anyway, first thing I want to do is correct a problem that I'd done the other day and uh, made a mistake at the end. Actually, I stopped one calculation short of the end of it. And it's this one, this is a refracting surface problem. So we've got a glass sphere of radius 15 centimeters with a tiny bubble five centimeters from the end. So here's the situation. Here's the glass sphere. It's got an index of refraction of 1.50. And here's the center. And then five centimeters from the center, there's a bubble, which means it's going to be 10 centimeters from the surface of it and presumably somebody is out here looking at this thing and so there's a nice big eyeball and uh they're looking in this direction at it along a line going from the center through the bubble to them so what's the apparent depth of the bubble below the surface of the sphere okay now the the formula that's been developed for refracting surfaces looks like this. N sub A over S plus N sub B over S prime. And uh, N sub A refers to the index of refraction of the sphere itself. N sub B refers to the index of refraction of the material the light goes into, presumably air in this case. And that will equal N sub B minus N sub A over the radius of curvature. So there's something we have now. Something we need to uh, concern ourselves with here is the sine of the radius of curvature. And we've, I've got my sine convenience here, refracting surfaces. Uh, first of all, front is the side from which the light approaches the surface. So this is actually the front in this case, because the light is going to have to come from the bubble for us to be able to see something. And then the back is the side that the light travels to after refraction. So this will be back out here, which sounds weird, but um, they just have kind of a consistent use of that. And the radius of curvature is positive if the center of curvature is in back of the surface. That means if it's out here, but the radius center of curvature is here in the front, that means it's going to be a negative radius of curvature. So I can just take all the numbers on this thing and apply them to this formula, except what we're interested in is where is... S prime going to be, and if I solve this, N sub B over S prime is going to equal, uh, let's see, N B minus N A over S plus, or excuse me, minus N sub A, whoops, that's supposed to be an R here. Man, talking right at the same time. I should know better than that. Uh, anyway, NB minus NA over R. Okay, so I can just take all the numbers here. Now, N sub B is 1, and so this will end up being 1.00 over S prime. NB minus NA, that'll be 1.00 minus 1.50, which is... Uh, 1 minus 1 1.5 is minus 0 0.50. Plug in the number for R. Radius magnitude is 15 centimeters, but the center of curvature is there, so it's going to be minus 15.0 centimeters. And then minus, whoops, this was supposed to be N sub A over S, so it's minus... 1.50 over 
S is 10.0, 0, 10.0 centimeters. Okay, so 1.00 over S prime. I'm going to solve these both at, well, individually, I guess. This ends up being positive. Wait, 5 divided by 15 is 0 0.033. And um, I've only got two significant figures on this. Minus 1.50 over 10. That's probably... Um, point one five zero, and both of these are centimeters to the minus one. So let's see. Hmm. Well, that's weird. Oh, I forgot a decimal point on that one. That's why. I think I have. Yeah, that's the one I messed up the other day. Um, minus point one one seven and actually the uncertainty is in that decimal place and that decimal place so i'm good to go there centimeters to the minus one so if i just take the reciprocal of that and stupid fraction i get uh s prime is equal to minus eight point five five centimeters and the negative sign if i look at my things here but the negative sign means it's in front of the surface so it's going to be inside there but it doesn't appear 10 centimeters below the surface it only appears 8.55 centimeters below the surface so that's how the thing happens to work out. And I think, let's see, when I'd done it before, actually, I think I stopped with that number and thought it was 11.7 for some reason. Didn't pay attention to the scientific notation on my calculator, which is bad. But at any rate, that's a correction to that problem. So we can see that. Um, first thing I want to do, this is a a worksheet that I sometimes uh, have students do. And if we were meeting live, we would actually work through this thing. <clears throat> but uh, let's just go ahead and do it here. And I've I've made this available on the on the uh, module page for today, which is whatever week it is, day three, week seven, day three, I think. However, Let's see what this is. For all the questions on the page, <clears throat> assume a lens with a positive focal image or focal length. That's known as a converging lens. Those are the ones that look like this from the side. And a real object. So um, no virtual object, which means we'll have a positive number for S. And then consider the thin lens equation, 1 over S plus 1 over S prime is 1 over F. Solve the equation for S prime. Well, if I start by doing one over S prime is one over F minus one over S. You've seen me do this a few times. Multiply top and bottom of this by S, top and, bo top and bottom of this by F. That's effectively multiplying each by one, but I would end up with S minus F over s times f and then s prime simple fraction simple fraction flip them both so s prime is s times f over s minus f <clears throat> oh under what circumstances is s prime negative well 
how could that be? Well, S prime can be negative if S is smaller than F. And so if S prime is negative, that means you have a virtual image, but you could just say S prime is negative under these circumstances, again, a positive focal length and a real object, if S, or a word of saying this better, is if the object is closer to the lens, than the focal length. And another way of saying that is that S is less than F. Okay, so using the result from A, wherever that was, there's our result from A. Um, in the magnification equation to produce a simplified magnification formula involving only the focal length and the object distance. Well, the magnification is that minus S prime over S equation. So we figured out that S prime is equal to this. So what we'll have is S times F over S minus F, and then on the bottom, I've got an S, which I can think of as S over one, if I want to, fraction divided by fraction, invert and multiply. So I'd have S times F over S minus F, and I'm multiplying by one over S, and those divide out. So I just end up with the focal length over S minus F. Well, okay. Now, under what circumstance is the magnification positive? Well, let's see. That was S. Oh, I forgot there's a minus sign out here that I lost track of. And so this has a minus sign. This has a minus sign. But if I multiply top and bottom of this by minus one, it'll get rid of it up here and it'll reverse that. This ends up being F over F minus S. Okay, so what does that tell me? The magnification is positive if F is greater than S. Well, that's the same condition that's required for S prime to be negative. Okay. So you get positive magnification means you have an upright image. And so the image will be upright. Can't necessarily say anything about the image size of the image yet. Well, actually I can, um, but the magnification is positive. I could say magnification is positive. That means an upright image if the object is closer to the lens than the focal length, if S is less than F, because then this denominator down here is going to be positive. The focal length is already positive. Uh, we're given that. So it's the same condition. If the focal length is greater than the object distance, or if the object is closer to the lens than the focal length, then you'll have positive magnification. And it's the same condition for that. Now, um, let me slide this down and continue on here. For the situation where the magnification is positive, make a sketch of the placement of the object, the lens, and where it's going to be. Well, something that uh, will help here, let's see, S prime is gonna be S minus F. Can I say anything about the placement of S prime related to uh, S? Anyway, um, I can draw the lens 
So here's the lens. I can make a dot for the focal length out here. So that's the focal length. The object is going to be inside the focal length there. So here's S. Can I say anything about the size of S prime? Well, actually I can. Um, if I play around with this equation a little bit, um, Yeah, play around with that equation just a little bit. Uh, I'll do it down on the bottom of here. S prime, if I multiply the top and bottom of this equation here by 1 over F, so I have SF over S minus F, and multiply top and bottom by 1 over F, now remember, S is less than F. I'll get S divided by S over F minus one. Okay. Now, S over F is less than one. I'm subtracting one away from it, but I'll end up with a negative result but it's going to be less than one, that result is, because this is less than one. If you have a number like fourths minus one, you'd get minus one fourth. You won't get something bigger than negative or more negative than negative one. So this result is going to have a magnitude less than one, and I'm dividing S by that thing with a magnitude less than one. So the magnitude of S prime is going to be bigger than the magnitude of S. So magnitude of S prime is bigger than the magnitude of S. So that took a little bit of monkeying to figure that out. But that means that here, if, if this is my geometry, I've got the lens, I have the focal length there, and the object is here, but S prime is going to be to the left of this. So that's something that I can say there. And when the magnification is positive, how does the image size compare to the object size? Okay, we didn't talk about that, but if we come back here, remember F is bigger than S in this case. This is going to be positive here, so I do get a positive magnification, but I'm taking something away from F something, a positive quantity, but it's not going to make it negative. And so what this means is this denominator down here is less than F. So the numerator is F. I'm dividing by something less than F, and I'm going to get a magnification that's greater than 1. So... When the magnification is positive, the image size will be bigger than the object. And so that's something that we can try that. Anyway, see if you can figure out a sentence that would tie all of these things together. And uh, you can print this off and work through it on your own, too. So we'll see how that goes. Now let's just try a, a few thin lens equations thin lens problems and see how these go. Uh, for starters, we'll have an object 32 centimeters in front of a lens. Okay, front means that's the side from which the light approaches the lens. Now we're on thin lens things. Front, the side from which the light approaches the surface. Back is the side that light travels to after refraction. And let's see, we probably won't have to mess with uh, radii of curvature, but uh, on most of these, we won't anyway. Anyway, so we have an object in front of the lens, forms an image on a screen eight centimeters behind the lens. 
Okay, so here's what we've got. Um, actually, we don't know anything about the lens just yet, but we do know that the object is over here. So here's the object, and S is equal to 32 centimeters. Interesting, there aren't any significant figures on this to speak of. Um, I'll have to retype this someday. But we get the S prime being eight centimeters behind it. Not to scale here, but um, anyway, somewhere over here is the image. And that's the object. Okay, find the focal length of the lens. Well, sign conventions, this is positive. It's a real object. Uh, let's see, S prime is positive if the image is in back of the lens. Okay, that's the back of the lens. So S is 32 centimeters. S prime is 8 centimeters, not meters. So I can figure out the focal length. Remember, 1 over S plus 1 over S prime equals 1 over F. Which, actually, this looks to me like, uh, top and bottom, looks like S prime plus S over S times S prime. Okay, and I'm pretty quick at doing that, adding these two fractions together and getting a common denominator. But um, practice that if you're not. Anyway, the focal length, this is a simple fraction, that's a simple fraction, I can flip them both. Uh, it's quicker than cross multiplying and then redividing, but that'll equal s s prime over s prime plus s, which looks to me like eight centimeters times thirty two centimeters over eight plus thirty two or forty centimeters. And let's see, I can divide out those centimeters with those centimeters, and I'll still have centimeters on top. Eight over 40 is one over five, so I'll actually get 32 fifths of a centimeter, which is 6.4, and that's pushing it a little bit to keep that many significant figures, but that would be the focal length of the lens then, 6.4. Now, what about the magnification? Well, this is easy. It's minus S prime over S. So minus 8 centimeters over 32 centimeters. That's minus 1 fourth. Uh, is the lens converging or diverging? Well, we got a positive number for the focal length. That's a converging lens. And things about uh, focal length, it's positive for a converging lens. So I can now draw that lens rather than a rectangle. It looks like, like this. That's what it looks like. And the image is negatively magnified, so it's upside down and one-fourth the size of the object. So all that stuff comes out. Okay, the magnifying glass is a converging lens of focal length 15 centimeters. By the way, by the way that isn't true of all magnifying glasses, you can have varying focal lengths for them. But at what distance from a postage stamp should you hold this lens to get a magnification of plus two? Okay, well, we already know for a converging lens, if you want to have a positive magnification, you have the object inside the focal length. So here's our... Uh, postage stamp. I don't think many people collect stamps anymore. Um, used to be a big deal. But anyway, you've got this uh, magnifying glass here with a 15 centimeter focal length, which is going to be somewhere out here. And we want to know what is S going to be to get a positive magnification. Well, we just did some work where we figured out 
I'm using this one over S plus one over S prime is equal to one over F. Uh, we'd like to know, well, actually we're after S in this case, right? Here's the thing. The mag magnification, which is minus S prime over S, is going to equal plus two. So I think that S prime will equal negative two times S. And you can take that minus sign and bring it down to the S and S prime will equal two times negative S is negative two S. And it's S that I'm after. So I should be able to just replace S prime with minus two S. So I'd have one over S minus one over two S is gonna equal one over F. Well, this is two over two S. So two minus one is one on top. So one over two S will equal one over F. Flip both. 2s is equal to f, or s is equal to half the focal length. And it's 15 centimeters, so we're 7.5 centimeters away. So this is just playing around with that thin lens equation, doing a bunch of various things with it. So not so bad. Um, we're going to do one, two, two lens problem here. Uh, so you'll get a, a little bit of a feel for that one that's on the, the homework that I think is one people are afraid of. Anyway, a microscope slide is placed in front of a converging lens that has a focal length of 2.44 centimeters. That's pretty short, actually. That's only like that. Um, the lens forms an image 12.9 centimeters from the slide. How far is the lens from the slide if the image is real and if it's virtual? Well, if it's real, then S prime is going to equal plus 12.9 centimeters. So we know that. And we can use the thin lens, but if it's virtual, S prime is going to be minus 12.9 centimeters. So right off the bat, I'm pulling those off of our sign convention for thin lenses. Um, actually, it doesn't say... Um, well, this is real in this case, and this is virtual. So that's something that I, I kind of knew, um, but you can convince yourself of this with some examples as well. All right, but let's go ahead and see this. I've got one over S plus one over S prime equals one over F. In this case, um, I know S prime and I know F. What I don't know is S. So I do the same thing that I've done before, except this time I'm solving for 1 over S. It'll equal 1 over F minus 1 over S prime, which getting a common denominator of F S prime will give me S prime minus F on top. Simple fraction, simple fraction, flip them both. S is going to equal F S prime divided by S prime minus F, which in this case, let's see, that was 2.44 centimeters. S prime is 12.9 centimeters. And on the bottom, I'll have the 12.9 centimeters minus 2.44 centimeters. So time for a calculator for today.
What did I get? Uh, three point, I can keep three significant figures. I guess it's zero one centimeters. So this short focal length thing here, you'd actually have it a little ways outside of there and uh, do that. Uh, magnification in this case, um, doesn't ask for it, but minus S prime over S, it's going to be minus 12.9 centimeters over 3.01 centimeters. So about a little more than four times as big. I don't know if that's going to be useful or not. But anyway, let's do it the other one. Uh, this time, S prime is going to be negative. I suspect this thing is going to be acting like a uh, magnifying glass in this case. So I can use this again. Okay, so S will equal F S prime over S prime minus F, which is 2.44 centimeters times negative 12.9 centimeters. divided by S prime is minus 12.9 centimeters minus the 2.44 centimeters. So just plug that into your calculator. I'm not going to try this in my head. Um, Hope I got everything punched in right here. I get uh, 2.06 centimeters. So the converging lens has a focal length of 2.44 centimeters. We're putting it inside that focal length at a closer distance than that. And when we do that, we get this uh, negative for this virtual image that's going to be on the same side as the object was. And in this case, the magnification minus S prime over S will be minus that. So it's going to be positive 12.9 centimeters divided by 2.06 centimeters. That's going to be bigger than six anyway. It's also positive. And uh, so I just say it's greater than six and greater than plus six. So it'll be an upright image, six times the size of the original, and on the same side of the lens as the original was. So it's a virtual image. Well, we already knew that. Um, that was something we were told. So works the same way. This one might be a little weird, actually. I just glanced at it this morning and haven't thought it through yet. An object is placed 50 centimeters from a screen. Where should a converging lens with a 10 centimeter focal length be placed to form an image on the screen? Oh, okay, so I know the focal length, it's positive. It's a converging lens, so it's positive. Plus 10 centimeters. And let's just pretend we have two sig figs on this thing, even though it's not determined well when it's written as 50 centimeters. And this is another one I should retype. However, uh, what we've got is a, a converging lens. We have a screen. And we have an object. Well, I think it's going to be on this side of it but I don't know for sure. Maybe there are two places where this could happen. So let's find out. Um, this is, whoops. I don't know what was going on with that. Anyway, this is 50 centimeters. And this will be S. This will be S prime, 
we're getting an image on there. So, and the combined distance S plus S prime is equal to 50 centimeters. Hmm. So, and I get the impression from this thing that there are two possible locations for that lens that will do this. So let's find out if that's the case. Okay, well, things we know. 1 over s plus 1 over s prime is equal to 1 over f. Um, this is a little bit weird. I've got two unknowns here in a single equation, except I've got this thing that'll let me get, get it part way down. So let's go ahead and say that s prime is equal to 50 centimeters minus s. So then I can say 1 over s plus 1 over 50 centimeters minus s is equal to 1 over f. I know what 1 over f is. It's s that I'm after in this case. And get a common denominator of s times 50 centimeters minus s. And on top, I'll have 50 centimeters minus s for that one. And this one, I'll have an s on it, which makes the s's go away. And that'll equal, I'm going to continue it on, and then I'll set it equal to 1 over f. The top is just going to be 50 centimeters. The bottom is s times 50 centimeters minus s. S is kind of an unfortunate variable because uh, it's easy to confuse with a 5. But this will equal um, 1 over 10 centimeters. This time, I think I will just cross multiply it. I'll get 10 centimeters times 50 centimeters is 500 centimeters squared is going to equal 50 centimeters times s minus s squared. Hey, guess what? We've got a quadratic equation. If I bring this stuff over, s squared minus 50 centimeters times s plus 500 centimeters squared is going to equal zero. Yuck. I haven't done any factoring for a while. I'm pretty rusty at it. I want, it's uh, going to be a plus, no, wait, that can't be right. Hmm. Yes, it can. Uh, with a, let's see, a plus at the end, it's either plus, plus, or minus, minus. And all right. <laughs> I think we'll just have to do this. S is going to equal the negative of B. And I'm just going to put the numbers in here. Plus or minus the square root of B squared, which is 2,500. Minus 4 times A times C. 4 times 1 times 500 minus, which is 2,000 actually. All over 2A, which is 2. So this is, whoops, that's 2,000. Um, so S is 50 plus or minus the square root of 500 over 2. I hope we get reasonable values for this thing. <laughs> if it ends up being 4,720, I'm going to be a little disappointed. But... Um, Okay, one value for S that I get is S is 36 centimeters, and I'm just keeping two sig figs on here. And the other one, um, I bet it's going to be 14, about. But we'll see. Anyway, um, yeah. 
Yeah, it is. And for both of these, S prime, then you could figure out for the first one, if this is 36, this will be 14. And for the second one, if this is 14, this will be 36. And there are the two cases. So kind of a weird little thing. And then you can figure out the magnification in this case is minus S prime over S, which is minus 14 over 36. And in this one, <laughs> Uh, magnification is going to be uh, minus 36 over 14. So kind of weird things. But yeah, you can figure out two spots where that's going to work. You might try this out next week in the lab when we'll be playing with thin lenses. And uh, they're negative magnifications in both cases but one of them's bigger than one and one of them's less than one. Okay, uh, let's see. Okay, here's the two lens problem. And I think we probably have time to work this out. And then I wanna show you something else that you can try for extra practice on these things. We have a converging lens with a focal length of 30 centimeters. So if it's a converging lens, that's positive. So F equals plus 30.0 centimeters and an object is placed 90 centimeters to the left of the lens so that's s and s will equal plus 90.0 centimeters it's a real object so we'll have that first determine where the image formed by the lens forms image formed by the lens okay um, and determine its magnification. Well, this shouldn't be too bad. Uh, a, we want to know what S prime is. And I've done this enough times today that, except I've been throwing away my things in between, but uh, S prime will end up equaling. Well, let's see. F S over s minus f so let's see what we get in this case 30.0 centimeters by the way i don't give you this formula on the test i expect you to be able to put this yourself so 30 centimeters times 90.0 centimeters divided by s minus f 90 minus 30 is 60.0 centimeters and i think i'm going to get 45.0 centimeters in this case okay how do we know that well 30 divided by 60 is one half so i'm going to have a two left on the bottom and that's what 45 centimeters is anyway the magnification in this case is going to be m equals minus S prime over S, which is um, minus 45 centimeters over 90 centimeters, which is minus one half. So it's going to be um, upside down and half the size of the original. Okay, now a second lens with a focal length of 7.50 centimeters is placed. 67.5 centimeters to the right of the first lens. We better draw a picture for this. So for B, here's my, here's what I've got going on. Here's the object. And it's 90 centimeters from a lens that it has a focal length here. I get an image of this thing that's upside down and only 45 centimeters away. This is not exactly to scale, but um, kind of works. Okay. And so I've 
that, but then I take a second lens and put it 67.5 centimeters to the right of the first lens. Well, let's see, 67.5 minus 45 is 22.5 centimeters. And it's a positive focal length, presumably. Well, they don't say. So 22.5 centimeters. Now, this is going to serve as the object for this lens. Okay. And this has a focal length of 7.5 centimeters, so this is still outside the focal length of it. So that's good to know. And this one, F equals 7.50 centimeters. I think I can just use this equation again. Determine its uh, determine where the image formed by the second lens forms and determine its magnification. So what we've got for the second lens now is um, S prime is going to equal F S over S minus F. And the focal length of that second lens is 7.50 centimeters. That's seven, not um, two times S, which is 22.5 centimeters. Divided by S, which is 22.5 centimeters. Minus that. 7.50 centimeter focal length. And let's see. I think I get 7.5 centimeters. Um, but maybe not. 22.5 minus 7.5, I think, is 15. Uh, 7.5 over 15 would give me a 1 over 2. Oh, nope, not quite. Better check that. I'm pretty sure, let's see, it'll come out to 11 and a quarter, but I'm not absolutely sure. Yeah, I get, so 11.3 centimeters. So I have that. And the magnification of this thing, of this one, is going to equal minus S prime over S, which is minus 11.3 centimeters over, uh, let's see, I drew a picture for this. It was 22.5 centimeters. Which I think... Oh, actually, that's going to be minus one half. Okay, if I had ignored the, uh, that was 11 point, it was exactly half of 22.5 is what it was. But at any rate, that's the magnification of that one. How will the image formed by the second lens compare to the original size? Well, here's the deal. Uh, to begin with, or the first lens, we got a magnification of minus one half. And then we take that image and use it as the object for this other lens. And we get another magnification of minus one half. So the total magnification, M total, ends up being minus one half times minus one half which is one fourth, it's going to be upright. That came out positive, but it'll only be one fourth the size. So that's what we have to do on a problem like that. Now, um, parts or the last part here is to repeat parts B and C, but the second lens only 30 centimeters to the right of the first. Okay. So let's go back and, and draw a new problem or a new figure for this and see how this works out. 
uh, for the first part of the problem, we had an object here, we had a lens, and this was 90.0 centimeters. This was our original object. And we got the image forming 45 centimeters over here. So 45.0 centimeters here. And so that was the orientation anyway. And that first magnification was, min I'll call it M1. It's minus one half, M sub one. But now we're going to take this second lens, which has a focal length of 7.5 centimeters, and I'm going to put it here before this image manages to form. And so what we get in that case is this is going to be a virtual image or a virtual object, excuse me, because it's a point that the, the uh, <clears throat> light from this lens, the first lens, is converging toward, but it hasn't had a chance to do it yet. And when that's the case, this ends up serving as a virtual object. This is 30 centimeters. the distance that's there, and we'll end up with a negative object distance in this case because it's a virtual object. So for the second lens, we'll have that S is equal to negative, uh, 45 minus 30 is negative 15.0 centimeters is what we get in that case. Now, the light is still going in this direction. And so this is going to be kind of interesting, whatever happens in this case. But uh, let's see what happens. We've still got a focal length for that second lens of 7.50 centimeters. And let's take the then lens equation, 1 over s plus 1 over s prime, oh, that's positive, um, equals 1 over f, and our s prime, as before, is going to equal f times s over s minus f, but we've got that negative uh, object distance here because it's the virtual object. So let's just plug in the numbers and see what happens. Plus 7.50 centimeters times negative 15.0 centimeters, and then negative 15.0 centimeters minus 7.50 centimeters. This ends up being minus 22.5 centimeters on the bottom. Um, on top, 7.5 times 15. Turn on calculator first. I'm having to be really careful <laughs> with signs on this thing. I get 5.0. I should be able to keep three significant figures, I think. 5.00 centimeters. Okay, that's positive, which means um, it's going to be on this side of the lens. Let's see, which is... Kind of interesting. Anyway, what about the magnification of it? Well, magnification is minus S prime over S. It'll be minus 5.00 centimeters over that negative 15.0 centimeters. So it's going to be one third is what that magnification is. And this will be the second 
magnification that we have going in here. So how does that compare to the original? Well, when we stuck that second lens in there, we'll get M total. We multiply the magnifications when you've got them done in sequence like this. It's going to be M1 times M2 or minus one half times one third or minus one sixth. So the addition of sticking in that second lens took um, the minus one half and made it even smaller and having it at that particular location anyway, we'll get an upside down image and uh, just things are strange in this case anyway. So that's a two lens problem. So those things are a little bit weird to do those. Okay, I was going to show you one other thing real quick. Um, there's another, there's a worksheet that I posted for you. And uh, it's something that's just sort of good practice anyway. And this is uh, what the worksheet looks like. And it says, to the extent possible, fill in the table below for lenses A through I. And one thing you'll be doing when you're solving this is you'll just be working with one column at a time. And so that's how it'll work. Um, it's a converging lens. And so let's see. If it's a converging lens, it's got a positive focal length. So the first thing you could do, I'm in column A. First thing you could do here is put a plus sign in front of that 10. So... That's something you could do now. So all you know about this lens is that it's got a focal length of plus 10 centimeters, okay? You can't say anything about the radii of curvature because you can have various radiuses of curvature depending on the index of refraction of the glass. And so uh, in here, you would put, if you can't determine anything, you'd have CBD. And you'd have to look at the, the lens maker's formula. But there are three unknowns in the lens maker's formula. And if all you know is the focal length, you can't figure those out. So this is going to be a CBD, cannot be determined in this case, um, CBD here. And also the index of refraction, you know nothing about that. So don't know any of those things. However, you know the focal length and you know S, so you'd be able to calculate what S prime happens to be. And then once you know S prime, you'll know S and S prime. So you can figure out the magnification depending on the sign of S prime. If it's positive, it's a real image. Um, if it's negative, it's a virtual image. The, this row here is a yes or no question, real or positive, and so is the upright one. And once you know S and S prime, if the magnification is positive, it's upright. If it's negative, it's that. So you can work your way through each of these columns and do some reasoning on there. Some of them, um, E and F and G, you're actually giving the radii of curvature of R1 and R2 and the indices of refraction. So you can figure out the focal length. That's all you can figure out because you don't know where an object is. You're not given those. You're not given, oh, yes, you are. You're given S in both cases. So once you know the focal length, you can figure out what S prime happens to be. Um, once you know the focal length, if it's positive, it's converging. If it's negative, it's diverging. So you can figure out lots of stuff. And this is just good little practice on, on working things out. So each one of those, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, is a thin lens problem. So Lots of practice on those anyway. All righty. Um, any questions? This will kind of converge or end our study of thin lenses. Um, I think as 
for uh, oh the last section in the chapter that's of interest is different optical instruments. But I think what I'll do is talk about those next Tuesday uh, before you do a thin lens lab. So tomorrow we'll actually be starting uh, physical optics and looking at some of our first problems in there. So anyway, um, we'll go back to this thing for sharing and I haven't seen any questions. Most of these problems, you have to be careful. I keep an eye on the, the sign conventions when I'm doing these things to avoid making dumb mistakes. If we spent a lot more time in optics, you'd be able to get these things memorized actually, but uh, we just don't have a month to spend on it. And so that's why I'll give you this when you take a test. So we'll stop recording here and I'll get this posted later this afternoon. I've got an appointment in town at 1.30, so it'll be a little bit later than usual.